Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is, uh, uh, I bring you greetings from the House of Prayer, Evangelistic Church. Right now, I believe it will be community center at, at some point. But um, I bring you greetings. Uh, this is our, our mind is breaking um, ministry and uh, I just want to thank uh, my pastor, Pastor Bernard Crawford, his wife, um, Evangelist Trina Crawford, uh, for allowing you know uh, people to go for, forth and to um, and to uh, move into ministries where they find them um, having some type of uh, how would I say that. Um, just where they where they're uh 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 uh, uh what I'm looking for I can't find it but I uh, just appreciate them allowing us to grow in these ministries and so um we're gonna I'm gonna say a prayer right quick um, Father God we just thank you on this evening for allowing us another day God to come before your throne to uh. And to come before your people, God, to uh, just share a little bit about uh, what it is that you're doing, what it is that you want to do in our lives, God. So we just ask, God, that you continue, God, just to touch the minds, God, of your people, the hearts, God, the, uh, for those who are still struggling, God, with whatever it may be, with addiction, with, um, with anger, with, uh, with lying, with... Uh, whatever it may be, God, I pray, God, that you would allow them, God, to that the change would be broken in their lives, God. And I pray, Lord, that they would understand what's necessary for that to happen. And so with that, Lord, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Um, like I said before, this is our bondage breaking ministry. And I think uh, the next next month, the third uh, last Thursday of next month, We'll be trying to do this with uh, with the Zoom um, because I think personally it's necessary for us to um, to kind of uh, be able to share. You know, when you're dealing with this kind of ministry, to be able to share what's going on, uh, the struggles, and and, and 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 whatever and whatnot, so that we'll be able to pray for each other, encourage one another, and uh, give good, sound counsel, biblical counsel, and so. Uh, I just, I'm just, I'm here today, uh, Brother Mike, and we just, I'm just going to share a little bit, and I'm going to get out your way. I don't want to be here too long, and I don't want to keep the brother too long, so we, uh, I'm just going to be reading today from um, Ephesians 2, and uh, starting the first verse, I'm going to read down to the ninth verse, and I'm going to focus on the eighth and the ninth verse, and they will be the verses for the month because what we usually do is we usually when we come to these groups because usually this is a group meeting and what we would do we would sit in we would listen to um, uh, struggles that people may have uh, pray for those people and uh, like I said give good sound biblical counsel for the uh, for whatever it is that they're dealing with and um, and so here it is and so what we do is give the uh, a scripture for the month for them to uh, kind of meditate on and um, for the rest of that month until the next time. And so that's why we, we just give these, you know, those, we focus on one or two verses uh, when we do this, if, if that was ever a question. And so uh, anyway, Ephesians, Ephesians 2, and it reads, and although you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you formerly lived according to this world's present path, according to the ruler of the kingdom, let me go back, let me put that in, uh, sorry, let me read this from the King James, it says, from the King James Version, it says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, 
fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who was rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us, or made us alive, together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Verse 8, our focal verse says, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so, uh, you know, I was thinking about that, and I was looking through that, and those that 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 portion of the scripture deals. It's actually uh, it's Paul. It's, it's a letter to the Ephesians, and we know that that was a mix. Uh, you know, they had they had uh, what you call Gentiles in that group of people, and so that's why he was saying uh, bringing us together. And so when when Christ died, he all he 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 died for everyone, and I think that Paul was the perfect person to uh, to bring that message across. And so. Uh, anyway, in verse 8 it says, And for grace, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And uh, and somebody might ask, Well, what is being saved, uh, Brother Mike? And I would say that being saved is to be delivered, um, the deliverance of the soul from, the deliverance of the soul from sin and its consequences. Be separated from God. Yeah, the, the deliverance of the deliverance of the soul from sin and its consequences, uh, from death, or being separated from God. That's what I want to say. I'm sorry. And so, um, through faith in that not of yourselves. And a lot of times, I think that uh, we as we as Christians, we do a lot of uh, when we go. You know, we get we get saved, or uh, you know. When we get saved, a lot of times our 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 take on things is, well, I don't do this because I'm saved. You know, I don't go to the casino because I'm saved. I don't smoke because I'm saved. I don't do this or that because I'm saved. You know what I mean? And and that I'm look at when I look at that, I look at that as somebody doing something in their own strength. You know, because the saving part has already been done and. A lot of times we, we do this, man. We 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 we, it's, we give off a. Uh, I think we give off the wrong impression, man. That we, well, I don't do it because I'm saved. Well, how about I don't do it because <laughs> I couldn't save myself. Christ came and saved me, and as my relationship got better with Him, He was able to. I know. <laughs> he was able to. You know, the Word of God was able to change my thinking and change the way that I thought about these certain things because now what I thought, what I what I, what I wanted to do, uh, I saw that it wasn't what God loved. And so um, a lot of times I think we get that misunderstanding, man, because we want to say, well, what we don't do because of that. What, you know, and a lot of times that's just self, it's a self-righteous stand because we just want to, you know, let people know I don't do it because I'm saved, and so that that sets a, a, a that sets in, in, in people's mind that may not be saved or looking to or being you know look, looking to uh, discover who Christ really is and who God really is. That man, it's a bunch of rules, it's a bunch of stuff that I don't you know that we can't do. Well, I know when I got saved and I came, I started and I started coming to church and it was it was true salvation. I came down to the church. And I was still getting high. I was still I was still doing a lot of things, still in fornication, still a lot of things. But as I spent the time uh, in the Word, you know, it was the Word. It was the Word of God. And, you know, Christ is the Word. It was the Word of God that started changing my mind about these things. So now conviction started setting in. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I would say that 
If I'm just saying something that I don't do this because I'm saved and not because I'm convicted, you know, I think that's a different thing. And so, anyway, I, I, and the only way we do that is if we spend the time. That's just like, that's just like, uh, I know in Psalms, man, uh, Solomon, I mean, uh, David had a psalm that said, uh, delight thyself in the Lord. I think it's 30, uh, Psalm 37. And one of those, like, around four, fourth uh, verse, it says, Light yourself in the Lord, and he'll be the desire of, the heart, of your heart. And a lot of times when we delight, when we do delight ourselves in the Lord, and when we do get in and begin to understand and know more and spend that time, you know what I'm saying, then his desires become our desires. You know, that's just like, I don't know if y'all ever been, you know, had a friend or... <laughs> Uh, you know, a, a, a significant other or a co-worker or whatever, if you see that person every day, you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be something that you pick up from that person, whether it be a phrase, whether it be the way they do something, the way that you like, it's going to be something that you're going to pick up. You might not even recognize it right out the gate, but you start to pick up things from that individual. Why? Because you have start spending time with that individual and then you start to see some qualities in them that you may like. So sometimes, and we don't do it, I'm, I'm not saying like we just mimic somebody, but we pick up some things, some habits, some, you know, especially if it's something good. You know, I know when I was in the world it was something bad, but now it would be something good, a, a catchphrase or something that, uh, you know, it's likewise when we spend that time with God and he begins to, you know, we start picking up things. And then what, I, what, we, what we started thinking about, it begins to start shedding out because now I'm looking at this mirror, this which is the word of God, and I'm saying, hey, well, this is something that God doesn't like because the more I delight myself in him, the more I uh, spend that time with him, you know, um, I begin to change. It's a change taking place. So when, um, when, when, when something has come up that I know that I, okay, I, I saw that over there. I, I know God is not wanting me to do that. Now the conviction set in. Now, because we're saved and we had the Holy Spirit, we had the power to not do certain things. And so I wanted to just kind of clear that up because a lot of times we just, sometimes we as Christians, man, we do things that we don't realize we're doing. You know, you know, like I said, I don't do it because I'm saved. I don't, you know, but how about I don't do it because I'm convicted, because God don't like it, because God is, you know, I, you know, I want to please God. And so anyway, it says, uh, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. We're talking about salvation. You're talking about being saved. It's a gift. It's like, you know, we know from, from the beginning of the time that uh, when, when Adam sinned, man, he caused us to be, you know, we were separated from God. So Christ had to come. So we were dead. And it's in a spiritual sense separated from God. And so when Christ came, what the scripture says that he made us alive again when he did what he did. And if you believe, only if you believe what has been done with the the the, the work that he did when he came, when he when he uh when he died, when he was crucified, when he was buried, when he rose uh, again. And so if we believe those things, believe that he is at the right hand of God and he is the, uh, uh, our, our, our Savior, you know, believe that in our heart, then is when we become alive again. And then, and so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a good thing for me because I, I, I love being alive. I'm alive right now and I just love it. And so not of works that any man should vote. And so it's just, man, I, I think that a lot of times we, we feel like that what we do and what we, we can't do enough to get salvation. Matter of fact, salvation, like we couldn't do it. That's the whole reason Christ had to come. And I think when we get that understanding of ourself, uh, of that self-righteous stand, that man, I just ain't gonna, I, you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't, you know, when we un really understand what it was that Christ did, man, he brought us back to life when he did what he did. When he died, when he, when he died, and then when he came back to life, we became alive with him. Those who believe that he is who he says he is. And so uh, we can't uh, be content with past glories, stuff we've done before, and but be willing to uh, not be burdened to demonstrate our faith daily. But what our, our, our ultimate goal is is to nurture our relationship with God. 
And when we begin to do that, the more time we spend in the Word, the more time we spend with God in His presence, the more we become this new individual, and, uh, this alive individual. And so I, I think that, you know, we come to church and we do a lot of stuff. We just come down and we just, you know, and I'm not saying this for everybody. I'm saying a lot. I've seen a lot of this that people go to church and, and, and believe whether it's the church is the place. The church is just, and I love the church. Don't get me wrong. I love the church. I love to come and fellowship. I love to come and worship. I love, but I think that the mindset of the people is if I could just get to the church or if I could just stop doing this or if I could just stop doing that, you know, but that's not the, the answer is Christ. Christ is the answer. When we get closer to him, when we begin to spend our, 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 our time with him, He's the one that changes us. He's the one. So and even as mature Christians, our job is to point people to Christ and not come to my church, you know, come do this or or, 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 or to be God over their life. Man, you doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. Point them to the word. Show, if, if they don't know, if they don't understand, show them the word. Give them the word and, you know, help them. Disciple them is the word I'm looking for. Disciple. And then as they begin to see, they'll understand, okay. Now I introduce you to Christ. Now Christ can do the work that he, that he, that he already done. And so, anyway, that's, that's about it for me today, man. I just, I just really, I really, I really just am in a place right now where I just, I, I want people to get it. I want, I want, I want us to be, I want us to be free from uh, whatever it is that hold, that has us bound. You know, and sometimes being bound means that means that I'm 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 taking this stand, thinking that I'm doing something on my own. But we know that we couldn't do it without Christ. You know, and um, we can be bound in that in that aspect of our life. Really believing that man, I'm doing something. I'm doing all this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this service. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing that, man. And. Um, and Christ is the only one. He, he's the only one that can do it. He was he was sin. He was sinless. He became sin for us. He uh, he took a whole lot, you know. Then he died a gruesome death, and he rose again. And with that action, see all that. Everything else we could have did that. We could have went through a situation. This that uh, got beat up. Got you know, executed or whatever, but it was the fact that he rose that got the victory over sin. And so when we understand it, man, there's no way that we could have did that, no way, no way in, 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 in our own power to do anything, man. Because God had a, he had a, he had a, he had a wrath on us, a judgment on us that was tough. And if we recognize and really realize where we, where, where we were headed, We'll start to understand, man, how much we need Christ, how much we need the Word of God, you know, and not playing, and not playing church, and not doing a whole bunch of things, and I, and I just, my, I just, my heart goes out, man, to anybody that struggle with anything, and I don't want even them to feel like even if, if they, if they have confessed Christ and they still struggle with something, that they're not to condemn themselves, you know, uh, but to, but to know that, man, if I could just keep going back. Keep going back to that source, man. Eventually, you know, I can break these chains. I can deal with this stuff. I can open up. I can be, as I have been broken, I can be made whole again. And so with that, man, I'm going I'm to I'm leave y'all with that. I hope somebody got something. I, I know it helped me a whole lot. I don't, I just, man, I just love the body, I love people in general, man, and I just want us to be able to come together. I want to be I want us to all be made alive in Christ. Amen.